And so there's one side effect from cataract surgery that almost everyone gets, and almost no doctor talks about it, including me. Hey, good optometry morning. I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, your YouTube eye doctor, and today we are talking about the side effect of dry eye as it relates to cataract surgery. And we're gonna talk about why it occurs what you need to do about it, and how do you know if you have it. But first, before we start, we need to talk about what dry eye isn't. In almost everyone that has dry eye after cataract surgery, it's not because they don't have enough tears, it's because of the quality of tears. It's the quality, not the quantity of tears that's the problem. And in fact, that goes for almost everyone that has dry eye disease. But in the almost 50% of people that suffer from dry eye after cataract surgery, the problem is almost always quality of tears. So what you need to know is that there's glands in our upper and our lower lids, and they produce the oily part of their tear that helps prevent your tears from evaporating off. And so if the tear layer is disrupted, disrupting this oily layer, or if these glands are not working properly, then they're not producing a good oily part of the tear, and your tears are gonna evaporate off much faster, and that's gonna give you all sorts of dry eye symptoms. Symptoms like blurry, fluctuating vision, it's gonna cause your eyes to be dry, gritty, irritated, or burning. It could cause you to be more sensitive to light, and it can cause your eyes to be more red and inflamed. And it can also cause your eyes to water more, because when your tears are evaporate off, that can cause a reflex tearing in your eyes, producing a more watery eye. So what causes the dry eye after cataract surgery? So there are three main things that are causing the dry eye. So number one has to do with the incision that's made in the cornea during cataract surgery. So in cataract surgery, the surgeon's gonna make a small incision, usually about three millimeters long, in the cornea. That's the clear tissue of your eye. And when they make that incision, it's gonna sever some of the nerve fibers that are on the surface of the cornea. And those nerve fibers are really, really important in the tear regulation. Basically, they send nerve fibers to the surface of the cornea, and they can tell your brain the quantity of tears that are on the surface, the quality of the tears, and if you need to produce more or less tears. Now, if you cut some of those nerve fibers, essentially severing the feedback loop of that mechanism, you're disrupting the ability for the brain to detect what type and what quality of tear they need to produce. And so your eye might be producing too much tear, not enough tear, not this type of quality tear, and as a result, you're gonna end up with some dry eye. Now the second thing that occurs after cataract surgery, and so when you have any surgery or any injury for that matter, one of the steps in the healing process of our body is to produce some type of inflammation. And that inflammation is good, but that inflammation can also cause the glands in your lids to not produce as good a quality tear. And so that increased inflammation can cause more dry eye. And the third thing that can happen after cataract surgery is related to the eye drops. So you're gonna use a lot of eye drops before and after the surgery. And so these eye drops have very, very important medications that have very specific purposes in helping improve the outcome of your cataract surgery. So it's really important to use them. But those active ingredients in those medications and the preservatives in those medications can disrupt the tear film so it doesn't have as good a composition as it normally would, leading those tears to evaporate off, causing more dry eye symptoms. So what are you gonna do about this dry eye? Now, fortunately, a lot of the symptoms are gonna resolve with time, but there's things that you can do to help minimize their effect and help them to improve faster. So number one, most of the time your eye doctor is gonna recommend some type of lubricating drop. So a lubricating drop is gonna mix with your tears, help stabilize it, and try to create a composition that's more natural and more beneficial in healing the surface of your eye and also preventing your tears from evaporating off as quickly. Now there's a lot of different types of eye drops on the market, and there's a wide gamut of them. Some of them definitely work better than others. So you might wanna talk with your eye doctor about which one works best for you. One key thing that you wanna do is you wanna look for preservative-free eye drops. Because like I said, one of the issues is, is that with the medications that you're using is that you're adding preservatives which is disrupting the tear films. You don't wanna start using a lubricating drop that has lots of preservatives in it because you might be contributing to that dry eye as well. So look for a preservative-free eye drop. Now the other important thing is when you're using a lubricating drop, you don't want to dilute down the medications that you're using to help heal your eyes. So what you wanna do is you wanna wait about five minutes after using your medicated drops before you put a lubricating drop in. So the second thing that you can do to help with your dry eye symptoms is rest. So we know that rest is a really, really important thing in healing our body, and that goes for cataract surgery as well. So having good rest is gonna allow that tissue to heal up better and allow your eyes to produce a better quality tear. And we know that studies show that individuals that have more rest will have less dry eye. As well, when you're resting, 
relaxing, your eyes going to be closed, and that's going to provide a better environment for the cornea and the tissues around the eye to help reduce that as dry eye symptom. Number three, so sometimes after cataract surgery, your eye doctor can prescribe some prescription eye drops that are designed to reduce the inflammation on the surface of your eye. Now, you're going to already be using some of these drops to reduce the inflammation in the healing process, and those can help reduce the dry eye, but actually when you go off some of those drops, then the dry eye might increase, and so your eye doctor might recommend you going back on some of those drops to reduce the dry eye symptoms. And the fourth thing that you can do goes to back what your mom used to tell you is that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So basically, if you can start dealing with your dry eye symptoms before they actually start, that's going to go a long way to preventing them from developing in the first place. So I recommend to my patients is that you look at treating your dry eye before you actually start the surgery because a lot of people already have dry eye before the surgery even though you don't have any symptoms. So if you can do some treatments to treat your dry eye before the surgery, that's going to go a long way to have better healing having better outcome, and more importantly, that's gonna give them better measurements of the front curvature and the length of your eye that's probably gonna end up with a better outcome as well. So if you visit your eye doctor, they can often give you some help with some dry eye treatments, but there's lots of things that you can start with at home. So there's lubricating drop, definitely look for the preservative-free drops. You can look at warm compresses. Basically, if you can heat up those lids for five to 10 minutes a day, that can get those glands unblocked and flowing better. And also, if you're doing nutritional products like omega-3s, but you need the right type and the right amount to make sure they're treating the dry eye. And I've got some more videos on that at the end that you can watch. And if you want to learn a little bit more, I've got a video up here about some of the at-home treatments that you can use to help with your dry eye symptoms. Now, the other things that your doctor might recommend are some newer treatments called radio frequency and in, or intense pulse light RF or IPL, and these are some in-office treatments that can reduce the inflammation, get your glands flowing better, and actually really treat your dry eye very, very well before the surgery to help prevent those dry eye symptoms after. And they can also be really useful in reducing the bacterial and organism load that are living around your lashes to help reduce some of the risk of complications in cataract surgery. So if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the dry eye treatments that might help you before cataract surgery, you can watch this video right here. And if you want to take a little quiz, to find out if you might have dry eye, you can watch this video right here. And with that, have a great optometry day.